back from a road trip with my little daughter. It was pretty darn fun. And while I was there, down in southern Utah, I saw me an angel. And I think we have to be on the lookout when we are seeing angels. We shouldn't seek for them. However, we shouldn't miss them when they are clearly showing themselves to you. So angels show themselves to people in all forms of godliness. And my angel come, came in a pretty spectacular way. See, I'm always blessed. I'm always blessed as I'm in a wheelchair because I feel like God always takes care of me. I feel like, yeah, this life is hard and it's discouraging at times. However, I have never been in a situation um, where I felt like I was abandoned. I did feel like I didn't like to be in that situation, but I didn't feel like God wasn't aware of me. I didn't feel like that. I feel like it's a, it's a blessing um, that I have in my life. Anyway, especially when it comes to cars. So I drive an accommodated car and I love my car very, very much. Um, and it's very, very suited for me. I can get into it, I can get out of it. It's amazing. However, when we drove down to Southern Utah, I didn't bring my car because my mom came along with us. And I mean, truth be told, like my car hasn't been made since 2004 and my particular car of this brand is 2003. And so I was like, mm, I better drive my husband's car. So my husband has, will, um, like it's wheelchair, it's, it's accessible for me, it has hand controls so that I can drive his car. However, it's a big SUV and so I can't actually get into and out of it by myself. However, I'm not worried about that because when I go out places, like I'm always lost. I can always just leave for a minute and I'm gonna see a strong guy or a couple of strong girls and I'm gonna, or sometimes a strong girl. <laughs> um, and I will, and I will just ask them, hey, can you help me get out of my car? And like, people just don't say no. Like, people don't say no to me. They, they say yes, they will love to you, and they will figure out a way. And it's been, it's been awesome. It's been really, it's been really testimony building to me that, you know, it's okay that I'm in a wheelchair. It's not preferred, I don't love it, but there's a reason for it. And so, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't feel abandoned, is what I'm trying to say. Um, when I went down to Southern Utah, and I, we were visiting my little brother, he lives there, he's a psychiatrist down there in Southern Utah, and we were visiting his family, my daughter was playing with her cousins, um, and my little, my sister-in-law works at a temple down there, and I wanted to go to it early in the morning, like five o'clock the next morning, that's when she was gonna go. And my little brother has been the one getting me into and out of the car and stuff, and he's like, mother, I will drive you to the temple in the morning, but I gotta tell you, I really don't want to get up that early. <laughs> he is a sleeper in He works really, really hard. Um, and if he can sleep in, like that's what he would prefer to do. And he's like, okay, I just can't do it. And I'm like, John, don't worry. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. I'm gonna be okay. Like I'm always okay. And then I, I bore my testimony up and down, like God never leaves me alone. God always comes to my rescue. God never abandons me. I always have someone to lift me into and out of my car whenever I need it. I am completely blessed all the time. And he was he was a lot more confident, though I'm not sure he believed me, but he was confident that I was so confident. And I was so confident that someone would be able to get me into and out of my car that next day. And when I got down to well, and I, I woke up extra, because I wasn't planning on doing this um, extra little excursion when I was down there in Southern Utah. It wasn't, it wasn't like, this was not what I was like going for, you know? However, it was just a really cool opportunity and I wanted to take part in it. Anyway, so I get up really early the next morning and I go down with my sister-in-law and it's like five o'clock in the morning and we go to the temple that's down there in, in Southern Utah. It's the brand new one, the brand new temple. Um, I think they call it the Red Cliffs Temple or something. And as soon as we get in, as soon as we pull into the parking lot, I recognize this humongous miracle that I am expecting. Like I recognize the magnitude of what I am asking God to do. Because I had asked too. I had prayed and like, 
oh, bless me, I'll have someone to give me a tune out of my car, like I always do. I know you take care of me, because you always do. Like the night before, and even that morning, I'm like, bless me, with someone to give me a tune out of my car, like I always have. You know, like I have utmost confidence. And as soon as we pulled in the parking lot, I'm like, because uh. <laughs> it was black as night. I mean, it was so early in the morning um, that we were there, and it was like black as night, and there was like, a dozen cars, maybe, in the parking lot, and they were all like in the temple already, and they were all temple workers who, like, notoriously are incredibly old. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I am not gonna find somebody who can get me out of my car right now. Like, this is gonna be, this is impossible. Like, I am not gonna be able to do this. And um, I start to recognize, like, this is maybe, I've asked too much. I've asked a little bit too much from God this time. Like God's trying to teach me a little bit of humility. I have bragged about all of these blessings that I get all the time. I'm so blessed. I'm like the favorite. I'm like, I'm like God's favorite child here on earth. He always takes care of me. I'm so amazing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like this isn't gonna happen. I can't believe like that there's nobody here. You know, I'm just so surprised. I like don't know what to say. Um, and my sister in law is like, oh, and I'm like, don't worry. Don't worry, I, it'll be okay. I'll just wait in the car, you know, for because it's the temple will open soon. The temple's not even open. I'm going in with all the workers, you know, and like the temple will open soon. When it does, like I'll have someone kind of get. You know, I was planning on doing like a really early temple session. Like I, I can't even remember the, the earliest one that they offer. It was like I don't even remember now. But I knew I needed to be in there really soon because I had to borrow clothes and change my clothes, and that always takes me so extra long. Oh my gosh. And my sister-in-law was going to help me change clothes and all of that, and I wasn't making it. I wasn't going to make it to that first session. Like, there was no way I was going to make it to that first session. Um, and we, we kind of rounded the parking lot, kind of looking at all the, the empty black, like, car windows. I'm like, there's nobody here. There's nobody, like, hanging out in their cars and stuff. Like, I'm not making it to this first session for sure. And so I started to instruct my sister-in-law. I was like, just park. Just park kind of close to the doors so that I can kind of, you know, maybe catch someone who goes inside. I can see them and ask them for help, and then I can make it to the first session that I can that I can make it to. This is I'm thinking God's, you know, trying to humble me at this point, which is completely understandable. I sometimes feel like a reason, one of the main reasons that I'm in a wheelchair in this life is to learn some humility. And definitely I need I need some of these lessons. Um, However, however, as we kind of were driving toward the handicapped parking that I was going to have my sister-in-law park in so that I could kind of see the people as they go in and maybe ask somebody, as we're pulling into this parking spot, we see this young man walk down the um, stairs of the temple, not the stairs, but like the, down the sidewalk of the temple toward the parking lot, which is an unusual direction because no one is finishing their job in the temple right now. Like no one's finishing their work. Everyone is getting to the temple. They're not walking from the temple. And, but I see him and he's dressed completely in white, like a white short sleeve, button up shirt, white pants, white, like those white nurse tennis shoes, you know? And I was like, oh my gosh, who is this guy that's walking away from the temple at this very perfect time? And he's a young man too, which is of course who I look for. When I when I go, I'm not trying to find like the oldest man in the crowd. Like, hey, can you lift me out? Even though probably most of them could, but um, but a young man is who I like look for. And here he comes, like down the down the thing. And I was like, what in the world? And so he comes close, and my sister-in-law calls out to him. She's like, hey, can we um, can we can we ask for your help for about five minutes? And he was just kind of like, sure, for what, you know? And she's she's like, well, my sister-in-law's here. We just need help lifting her in her wheelchair out of the car. And he was like, sure. No problem. I mean, just like really casual about it, like really like, yeah, that sounds good. You know, I was like, what are the, who are you? Why are you here? And he comes around to my door and I was like, is this guy an angel? Like, am I talking to an angel that just like walked down the sidewalk? Like, who? What? And he, he was really small. Um, like he was a young man, but he was kind of like a, a small framed, I don't know how old he was exactly, but he looked like had a, like a smaller body. And that made me feel a little bit nervous because I can tell 
I can tell when people pick me up, I can tell um, if I'm too heavy for them. Um, and I'm, to be honest, I'm too heavy for most people. And so when they pick me up, they kind of strain a little bit and I can feel the shake in their arms. I can name, like I know their names, I can name the people in my life who have picked me up who haven't strained. Um, and they're few and far between. However, this young man with kind of a smaller frame reached in and picked me up and he held me away from his body. Which of course, as anybody, as anybody knows, like it's hard to hold something heavy away from your body. Like you wanna use your, your muscles like this, to, you know, if something's heavy, you hold it close like this, you know? But he held me away from his body. He did not strain at all. He just was like, boop, boop, and I was like, Totally an angel. This guy's totally an angel. He's like picking me up right here, and he's holding me away from his body. He's like, here you go, madam. And he like lands me in my wheelchair. Except this is how I know he wasn't an angel because he almost missed the wheelchair. He was like picking me up, and I was like, what? Ah! Like almost fall out of my wheelchair. I was like, okay, I know you're not an angel, but you're pretty dang close, Ammon. That was his name, Ammon. Pretty good name. Anyway, pretty cool story. Pretty fun story. Um, pretty fun experience. We should always be looking out for angels all the time. I'm going to draw this, paint this dog because I was just hanging out with my little brother and he and I both love dogs. So I'm just going to dance at this painting right now because this is how I dance now that I'm paralyzed. For goodness, it's been over 20 years and it's been a lot of learning, but one thing I still love is dogs. I've always loved dogs. Hopefully I don't slaughter this dog. <laughs> Hi. Paint it, you know? So you don't have to be good at something to really enjoy doing something. Painting fills the void, the dancing left, and dang it, I'm gonna paint. Well, there was a watchdog on my canvas, and he's still fighting. I think he's still fighting to get free. However, he is a fighter, and that's kind of how I think about angels too. There are fire, our fighters. There are watchdogs from the other side, and they help us out, and they are always watching us and protecting us. You know, I have two dogs, and I love them so much. Um, in fact, if I was even just doing it tonight, like my family left, and I kind of. I heard some noise outside and I looked at my dogs and they seemed okay, so I'm like, I guess I'm okay. So, dogs are awesome. They protect me, just like angels always watch out for me and you. I hope you see some angels in your week this week. Okay, thanks for dancing with me. See you next time.